Welcome to the PBA's Grand Casino Hotel and Resort, Oklahoma Open. Hey, congratulations. You made the step ladder today. You want to win the tournament? You got to make it tomorrow, too. Yes, nine players, two days of step ladder, featuring the reigning player of the year today, EJ Taggett. Will he survive to Sunday? We are in the event center here in the Grand Casino in Shawnee, Oklahoma for the Grand Casino Hotel and Resort PBA Oklahoma Open. A genuinely unique event on the tour. We began with 91 players. We're down to nine in two days of step ladder. They bowled on four different patterns, including the final qualifying on the Oklahoma Open oil pattern. And now the top nine are in the two day step ladder finals. The top four get the day off. The next five, it's time to meet them with Dennis McCamry. The number nine seed with two career PBA Tour titles from Tampa, Florida, Tom Doherty! The number eight seed from Saginaw, Michigan with two PBA Tour titles, Tom Smallwood! The number seven seed was the 2015 PBA Rookie of the Year from Gothenburg, Sweden, Jesper Svensson! The number six seed is the reigning PBA Tour Player of the Year from Huntington, Indiana, E.J. Tacky! The number five seed with two career PBA Tour titles from Denmark, Thomas Larson. And those are today's competitors in the Grand Casino Hotel Resort in the PBA Oklahoma Open. Dennis, thank you very much. And hello again, everybody, along with the Hall of Famer Randy Peterson and Kimberly Pressler. I'm Dave Lamont. Thank you very much for joining us. So, partner, we've been privileged to do a lot of fun things in a year together, but this one's unique. Never seen anything like it. You don't have to bowl one step ladder to win. you got to bowl two. Yeah, it's another first for you and I and our great fans out there in the PBA Tour. You know, uh, Dave, the first tournament I ever won, I climbed the ladder and, and from the number five seed, went all the way, beat four players, and, and captured my first win. I couldn't imagine having to do that twice. <laughs> and that's exactly what we're in store for in the next two days. Nine player step ladder format. Tom Doherty, Tom Smallwood in match number one. The winner takes on Jesper Svensson. The winner of that match will face the reigning player of the year, EJ Tackett. And the winner of that match takes on Thomas Larson. And, but you're not finished because your first task on Sunday is to take on a future Hall of Famer in Chris Barnes, then the lefty Rhino Page, then a past player of the year, Jason Belmonte, who has two majors this year, and at the top, Marshall Kent. But Marshall figures in today's show as well, but we'll get to that in a moment. So let's just focus on our five today that we just met. You have a favorite? Well, I, I think all eyes are going to be on EJ Tackett. He's the reigning player of the year. He's got the lead in the player of the year race this year and looking to add to it. For me, it, it really doesn't seem to matter what pattern they throw at EJ. He finds a way to get it done, and that's why he's on our stepladder finals today. But remember, there is one other man on the telecast today. Let's not forget about the Iceman, Jesper Svensson. Oh, that's, that's a good point. The two-handed lefty. We'll see how he does against the pattern he had struggled on in qualifying, but he has also done well in the past. Now, we mentioned Marshall Kent. The ghost of Marshall Kent kind of haunts <laughs> this today because he gets to pick the oil pattern both days. For today, he chose bear. Why do you think he did that? Well, he said he chose bear because it's the toughest of the named animal patterns at 40 feet. It's really flat from side to side, so no help left or right of target for the players. But Marshall said he wanted this event to be a shot maker's event. And boy, you better make good shots on the bare oil pattern. Well, we'll find out about these next two competitors, how good they will roll it today or how well they will roll it today because they're standing by with Kimberly. Thanks, Dave. Yes, I am joined by Tom Doherty and Tom Smallwood. Tom, let's start with you. So when we spoke yesterday, you said you struggled a little bit on this pattern and you need to figure out a new strategy. So what did you decide upon? Yeah, we're trying something different. We're going to hope the scores are low. So uh, we're going to go with urethane and just try to make good shots, make some spares, fill frames, and 
I got the best ball rep in the business, and he gave me an idea, so we're going to go with it. All right. Well, I hope that works for you. Good luck today. Thank you so much for your time. Now, Tom, um, you had just about the opposite experience. You dominated on this pattern coming into today, but this is a whole different area that you qualified on. How was your reaction today? Uh, a little different than it was in the a, in a bowling center, but, you know, I mean, it's, it's fairly similar. So hopefully I can keep that going, you know, different lanes, different lane beds, different atmosphere, a little more pressure, so we'll see what happens. All right, well, thank you so much for your time. And guys, you know what? Tom Smallwood has a little bit extra incentive today to win because it's his son Brady's sixth birthday, and he is here watching his dad live for the very first time. That's right, Kimberly. Thank you very much. And, yes, there's the sign that he has prepared. So it'll be fun for Brady. Hope he enjoys the show, and hopefully, you well, know, from his perspective, that his dad's going to be there uh, a while on our program. But it's a tough deal today with this bear pattern. This is a page right out of the U.S. Open in terms of all patterns, Dave. Tough stuff. Tom Doherty will lead it off and average just a shade under 205 on this pattern in qualifying. On the left lane, and he rings down a 10-pin for a strike. And Tom Doherty going with urethane right out of the gate. He did mention something to, ask, to, to, that, uh, to that fact yesterday when he spoke with us. He said, you know what, I might just go with urethane. I've got to figure out something because I didn't have a whole lot. Well, Tom Smallwood did, 232.12. He blew away the field in the bear qualifying. He did not like that shot at all and is left with a five pin. Step in the water. And... And it sounded like he had a little trouble on the approach. He mentioned something about stepping in water. Yeah, it looks like he just kind of stuck there. There's the hop. And a lot of times when that happens, the player's going to pull it. And that's exactly what Tom Smallwood did there. So you do not very uh, often see a professional shooting at a five pin. But that was kind of an odd shot that came out of top, and I'm sure we'll see many better. Kind of a major champion and a two-time titleist. Now, over the eight games on this pattern, these are just the guys we're going to see today. And again, Tom Smallwood, Thomas Larson, who's our number five seed, and in our final match today, E.J. Tackett, Tom Doherty, and Jesper Svensson. And you see what our top seed, Marshall Kent, did. And he had better averages on other patterns. Yeah. Yeah, I, you know, I thought it was a very interesting choice when Marshall said he was going with the bear. There was a lot of us that thought maybe he would have gone with a shorter wolf pattern. And that time he mixes them up. Let's talk for a second for those who may not understand. Long and short oil patterns. So the, the, the named oil, animal patterns for this event are some of the most extreme. So you, you go with Wolf, which is the shortest at 32 feet. Then you, then next is Badger. That's the longest pattern at 52 feet. And then the bear is the flattest. And this bear pattern is 40 feet in length, and it's hard. Or is it? Tom Doherty doubling there. Well, you know, the player's got a lot of practice before coming on the air. And, and if you stay in the right part of the lane long enough, you can create something, and it's just a matter of whether or not it holds up. But, you know, Tom Doherty did say, hey, don't be surprised if I come out with urethane, and it's exactly what he's done. And they also had practice last night for a little bit of time, too, uh, once the lanes were put down and, and set up. So they've had uh, plenty of time to think about what equipment's going to work best. I thought it was interesting when Tom said for both of his tour titles, he had to climb the ladder. Now he has to do it twice. Uh, two days, eight matches, eight opponents. Oh, oh, boy. Oh, awesome. Unbeatable start for Tom Doherty out of Tampa. Uh, I don't know if he liked that shot or didn't like it because I thought I heard him say, oh, boy, when he let go of it. The result was perfect. Well, he likes it now, that's for sure. The unsinkable Tom Smallwood. You can throw anything at this guy, and it just doesn't phase him. You see his arsenal there, the rack attack solid. But, uh, well, he's also got the fix, the Zeno, and the quick fix if he needs a quick fix. Yeah, it's much more like the Tom Smallwood we know on that right lane. 
And he's playing the lanes very similar to what he did at the World Championships when he climbed the ladder there, only to lose TJ Tackett. He, he stayed right the whole time. But he was a monster on this bear pattern. I, I want to say that he averaged over 250 for the, his first five games. It was ridiculous. You see Tom's second TV Finals appearance, the 2009 PBA World Championship, a guy who was out of a job and decided, well, let me see what I can do here. I'm pretty good at this. Maybe I can make a living out of it. And Tom Smallwood won a major <laughs> by bowling like that. And another great shot. The guys are making pattern look pretty easy, easy on early on. <laughs> <laughs> You can see the lines in the blue oil there. He's right over third arrow on that shot. Doherty, a unique thumbless approach and a quiet 10 pin. So we've got a little bit of everything in the next couple of days. We've got no oh, yeah. thumb. We've got two handed lefties, one handed lefties tomorrow with Rhino Page. Two handers like Belmo, traditionalists like Chris Barnes and, and Doherty. And, well, actually, Doherty's not traditional, but my point is this 91 player field has a variety in the top nine. It's professional bowling bouillabaisse. It's just a little of everything. Which I think it's on the menu at one of the restaurants here. <laughs> BBA bouillabaisse. <laughs> so the lead is only one through four. Good shot. You're making good shots. Come on. Come on. There's Tom's arsenal. Only two with him at the moment. Black Hammer is the one in his hand now. Right, and he leaves one behind. Well, it, it, it could have been a pinch fast, too. So you throw it that hard, Thomas. There you go. Uh, with right. your thing, you're not going to get away with that. Reactive resin, yes. And that's what happens. You get a little jacked up, your adrenaline gets going, and you get a little firm. But the good news, it's just an easy two-pin that he needs to convert. Winner of this match will take on the two-handed lefty from Sweden, Jesper Svensson. Goes right at it. Both players clean through four and a half. We do want to give a shout out to our friends at the Fire Lake Bowling Center. That's where the qualifying happened for this event. As always, they did a great job of hosting. We are in the Grand Casino Events Center. About 40 minutes outside of Oklahoma City. Absolutely perfect. And you talk about the, the variety of bowlers. Tom Smallwood actually throws a full roller. And for those of you that don't know what a full roller is, traditionally the pros have, is, have what is called a three-quarter track, where for a right-hander, you'll see the lines of oil on the ball just left of the fingers and thumb hole. Tom Smallwood tracks in between the fingers and thumb hole. He has to drill his bowling balls completely different, otherwise the ball will flare over the fingers and thumb. Oh, bad break. You can see the look on his face. His eyes got a little wide when he let that go. He liked it a lot. Both players making just really, really good quality shots. This is Tom Smallwood's 14th career TV Finals appearance. Two-time champion, as is Tom Doherty. So Tom Smallwood with the 11-pin advantage. Both players we thought might be in a low-scoring pattern so far have looked pretty good. But they have a long way to go if they're going to get to the championship match tomorrow. But you do have to take it one shot at a time. We'll find out how this one finishes when we return. The Grand Casino Hotel and Resort PBA Oklahoma Open is brought to you by Grand Casino Hotel and Resort. The Oklahoma City area's premier casino resort experience. By Columbia 300, grab some friends, have some fun, let's bowl. 
by Barbasol. You're looking good, America. You're shaving with new Barbasol Premium Disposable Razors. And by Roto-Grip, built for those who take bowling seriously. Don't just play the game, own it. Let's take a look at how our top four made it out of the show for Sunday with our Extra Frame Tournament highlights. Chris Barnes, a future Hall of Famer, was never lower than 10th the entire week. A couple of big days for Rhino Page in qualifying. Yeah, the last two days, but he really got him good the third day on the Badger Oil pattern. Jason Belmonte at one point was way back. He finished second. Yeah, well, he averaged 256 the last eight games. That'll get it done. Marshall Kent opened with 160 and 170, and then forget about it. He was never lower than third the entire tournament. Nobody was catching Marshall Kent. So those four await somebody coming out of here tomorrow. Now, tomorrow at 1 o'clock Eastern, the conclusion of the Grand Casino Hotel and Resort PBA Oklahoma Open. The winner of all of this today will first open up with Chris, then Rhino Page awaits, then Jason Belmonte, and then the top seed, Marshall Kent, who has been a winner this summer already and has been really rolling it well. Maybe one of these two, Tom Doherty or Tom Smallwood. Doherty down 11 through 5.5 here at the event center. Well, wait a minute. <laughs> that would have been something. Yeah. <laughs> Talk about Tommy. backdoor strike. That's the first real bad shot Tom has thrown in this match. He got it up the lane. This one has no chance of laying there. Even though it's urethane, there's not enough hole to keep it on line. You know, I think what's amazing is <laughs> the 10 almost dominoes into the 6, but Tom Smallwood averaged almost 30 pins a game more on this pass than Tom Doherty. And yet we're pretty close through six. Just 12 pins separating the two. I have a stat of the day for you. Let's hear it. We have nine players who made the the two shows. Mm -hmm. We have no first. We're not, no one looking for a first time win. Everybody slow. has a title Decent. who's in this field. Shows the quality of the field and the demanding having to bowl over all these different patterns, changing daily. You give them enough games and competitive oil patterns, and this is what you end up with. Look at that. Yep, overcompensated. Can't do that. Well, he got it right. Two, four, eight, ten. Yeah, you want to bet? Somebody just said, yeah, hey, you can make it. Get his ball over into that two, four zone. Got to catch the two pin real light. Come on, Big turn here. Most. Nope. Leaves a couple behind. And all of a sudden, he went from minus 11 to minus 28. And Tom Smallwood, again, is a guy we've talked about a thousand times, just goes about his work, does his business, doesn't get involved in anything else. He just bowls. This guy's tough, mentally tough. He's like the blue-collar pro. Oh, and he had a split busted up there. That could have been favorable best effort. for Tom Doherty, getting it back in the match. Big break for Smallwood. Instead of the 410, it's just the four pin. Margin for error is just so slim. Oh, oh man, you know what? He would have made that split if it had been yeah, there, right? <laughs> Probably would have covered the 410. Yes, he would have. I don't, I don't think that was his intention. But so right now, Tom Smallwood closing in on an opportunity to face Jesper Svensson. We talk also about experience and youth. Uh, Jesper, one of the youngest stars on the tour. And a two-handed left-hander if you have not had a chance to see him yet. And if you haven't, he's fun. That's fun if you're Tom Smallwood and his son Brady, who's here today watching his father perform live on television in the building for the first time. Well, right now, Tom Doherty's max score is 231. 
Tom Smallwood going at a 228 pace, meaning if Tom were to spare strike out, Tom Doherty's only thinking one thing. With the strikeout, they have a chance. That's a big shot there for Tom Doherty. And you're right. That's all he can do. Well, if he does strike out, he forces Smallwood to double. Whether it's another another strike in the ninth or a double in the tenth frame, but he will put pressure on Tom Smallwood. But to have any chance at all, he must strike here in the ninth frame. Very unique style and approach. No thumb, a real long push away, and a short backswing. Oh, he hated it. Yeah, he knew right away. Yeah, got it wide again. He didn't even want to see it. Now he finally turns to look to see what he left behind. Going to try to flip that one over, and he does it beautifully done by Tom Doherty. And that going to be, without question, our hammer tough spare replay. Tom Doherty's a really good spare shooter. He makes a lot of washouts, a lot of two tens. We've seen it before on when he's been on the telecasts. And he converts the one, two, eight, ten perfectly. <laughs> tough small but took a more direct route. Uh, if you like shot making, swipe right. Because that's what Tom Smallwood's doing right now. And the bear, we has been reminded several times by Marshall Kent, our number one seed, and the man who chose this pattern today is a shot maker's pattern. The interesting thing, not to get too far ahead of ourselves, Marshall does have the right to change his mind at the end of today's show. And we're going to be talking to him about that a little bit later on in our program and get his thoughts. He hated that. The universal language of bowlers is when they stand straight up after a shot they don't like, and you could tell that that's exactly what happened with Smallwood. Well, yeah, it's enough to advance. He's going to take on Jesper Svensson. Never an easy spare, no matter what the situation in the match are. Right, Tom Smallwood. Take it all the way. Has moved on. That's the first step in the step ladder. Semifinals. The next step is occupied by Jesper Svensson, the Swede, the two-handed left-hander and a spectacular striker. But he struggled on this pattern in qualifying. Also, we have coming up a conversation with PBA Commissioner and CEO Tom Clark about a lot of excitement around the PBA Tour. We'll be hearing from Tom as well with Kimberly Pressler. So we got a lot coming up on a packed semifinal here in Shawnee, Oklahoma at the Grand Casino Hotel and Resort PBA Oklahoma Open. The U.S. men's national team will play their final warm-up before the Gold Cup. Today at 5 Eastern on ESPN against Ghana, their World Cup nemesis. You can also stream the match live using the ESPN app. That'll be in East Hartford, Connecticut. Should be fun to watch the beautiful game later today. Got our own beautiful game going on here. We go back to 2015 PBA Oklahoma Open in our Ebonite flashback, the summer of O'Neill. And Bill O'Neill did a lot of damage that year and took out his good friend Jason Belmonte to pick up a sixth PBA title. Yeah, he took out his tour roommate, his bestie. But Bill O'Neill in 2015 was a monster. A monster with trophies. Well, I'm standing by with Kimberly Pressler, we talked about Tim, Tom Clark, the PBA Commissioner and CEO, with some interesting news about the world of bowling. Here he is, Kimberly. Very interesting indeed, Dave. So, Tom, you know, we're halfway through a very exciting season so far, so why don't you tell the fans what they can expect for the remainder of the season and coming into the fall? Thanks, Kimberly. First of all, it's great to be back here in Oklahoma and at the Grand Casino. It's an awesome host and incredible competition, and you see that 
over the next two days on ESPN, you're going to see such a the diverse nature of the stars of our sport, and they all came to the top in this tournament. So we're really happy with what the fans at home were able to see this week uh, in Oklahoma. But yeah, there's so much more to come. It's been an incredible year so far, but we still have the entire Extra Frame Tour to come this summer, and then we have the U.S. Open, and then the big one, the World Series of Bowling, back in Reno in November and December, and the exciting news. Uh, with, the, with the World Series this year is we have a new umbrella sponsor of the PBA, Go Bowling. It'll be the Go Bowling PBA Tour. And Go Bowling represents the Bowling Proprietors Association of America and the bowling industry. And it's the face of this game, you know, the best game in the world, the greatest sport to play. And we are really happy that we're going to be able to promote the idea of get out and go bowling. Anybody watching this show, go bowling. Guaranteed fun. Guaranteed. Guaranteed fun indeed. Now you talked about the diverse um, athletes that are on that. Um, this week alone, we saw a 16-year-old, Trey Ford III, he placed 11th in this event. And that's amazing. Have you seen this trend of young and up-and-comers? Absolutely. On Player of the Year, E.J. Tackett is under 25. And we broke records in the last couple years with players like Anthony Simonson and Jesper Spenson winning major championships at the age of 20 and 19. And then what Trey Ford did this week was, I watched it on Extra Frame all week and watched him compete and to see a 16 year old with that kind of ability and that kind of composure you know there's there's a whole new breed of players coming up and uh, and yet at the exact same time so many of the greats of the game are still active so it's one of the great times to be a fan of professional bowling it absolutely is and you talked about Jesper's Benson he's actually coming up next so we're gonna send it back to you guys Tom and Kimberly, thank you very much. We look forward to all of that, Tom. It's going to be a blast. And you're right, Trey Ford was an incredible story. Now, Jesper Svensson, Tom Smallwood, lefty, righty, two hands v. one hand. Coming up. Well, we thank Tom Clark for his time. And over there to Tom's left is Nancy Shank, president of the BPAA. Glad they could make it out here for the finals. Oh, excuse me, the semifinals. We'll be here for the finals, too. A 16-year-old Trey Ford III is a PBA member, by the way, since he's 13 years old. But this two-hander finished 11th, just two spots out of making our show. Yeah, it was pretty impressive to watch on all the different oil patterns. Boy, he really kept it together nicely. Mature beyond his years. Yeah, I, I had a chance, we both had a chance to watch him, and it seemed like he would have maybe an off game, and you think, okay, you know, the bottom's going to fall out. He'd come back with a 230, a 240, just about every time. And he handled himself like a pro. Yeah. Our first match, Tom Smallwood defeated Tom Doherty, and now Jesper Svensson is the opponent for Tom Smallwood, but first, he speaks to Kimberly Pressler. Thanks, guys. Yes, I am joined with Jesper. So listen, when we talked yesterday, you said you struggled a little bit on this pattern. Um, now that you had a few practice shots, how's it going for you? Um, you know, I, I just try to, to come up with a new game plan, and I'm just going to try to make it very simple and, yeah, try to hit the pocket ten times and see what happens. Well, normally we see you throw in a urethane ball, but you've been throwing the reactive all this week. What did you decide to go with? Actually, I went uh, the other way. I went to a plastic ball, so put a lot of surface on it. So, yeah, so we're going to see what that's going to do. Hopefully, it's going to try. Okay. All right, thank you so much for your time, and good luck. Thank you. Well, he said he had to have another game plan. He got a plastic ball. He hit it with 500-grit Aberlon pad, basically like putting chains on your tires. It's the light blue ball there, and he's going to go with plastic. Interesting. Well, considering the struggle he had here, he's had, you know, what's the definition of insanity? Doing the same thing over and over again oh, and expecting a different result. Absolutely. He had to, you know, he had to find something. So Tom Smallwood will begin on the left lane here in Shawnee. Good luck, yeah, he knew it. My bad. It's awful. And yeah, sometimes that first shot out of a break is a tricky one. Well, and, and you heard Tom say it was awful. I, you know, awful for a professional like Tom Smallwood is a, an inch or two left of target. Unfortunately, on this pattern, when you do that, it's going through the nose. We'll cover that. Take that, Gerbs. Oh, he's pretty good on the 3 6 10, isn't he? Yes, he is. He's two for two with those today. Now our first look at the Swede, Jesper Svensson. 
We've seen him many times on ESPN, and including the MainQuarterly.com Roth Holman Doubles Championship he shares with Kyle Troop. <laughs> Doing stuff like that. The Iceman cometh. Here's our track tech talk with Randy. Well, we're so used to seeing him throw urethane and now plastic, but uh, he threw reactive resin uh, for two days straight in this event, but you can see just how much deeper he has to be on that right lane. You can see the motion is completely different as well. And the urethane ball strikes and the reactive ball rings seven. So, but interesting, uh, this is a first for me. I've never seen him throw plastic. Look out, look out. Oh, that's brutal. A lazy messenger. I thought Mike clipped that seven. Oh, that was an awful break. And both pins are wiggling. <clears throat> Take a look. Normally, you would see him take both pins out rather quickly. So he'll take his punishment. I for sure, I still can't believe that messenger didn't take the seven. It had mo more momentum than I realized. Uh, Smaller than five. Well, the good news is both balls are in the pocket. Bad news, it's the open frame in the second with the pocket 7-10. Well, get it out of the way early might be the one thing Jesper is thinking. Right lane and Tom Smallwood, buddies. Well, Smallwood shot 232 the first game, which is exactly what he averaged for eight games on this tough bare oil pattern. As we take another look, just right a third arrow, perfect direction, hand, rotation, and speed for Tom Smallwood. Fourth place in the Fire Lake PBA Tournament of Champions, won by E.J. Tackett on these same lanes. Different building, but on these. And smothers them. So Tom Smallwood defeated Tom Doherty. Tom Doherty is standing by with Kimberly. He sure is. Tom, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with me. Um, so in your match, you started off strong. You had three strikes in a row, and then something changed. What was that? I just threw a couple bad shots. I mean, it was really hard, and I had to be almost perfect to get a strike. So I started off strong, stronger than I thought. If, if you told me I was going to shoot 211, I would have taken it and hoped it was enough. What do you think it is about this pattern that people struggle on? There's just not much left for the guys, the high rev players. They can't really miss left. Um, so we have to get so far left, and we have to create a lot of angle to create hold. Smallwood kind of has this funky roll, and he's the only one that can kind of do it from the right. So I think he's going to climb the ladder. All right. Well, thank you so much for your time, guys. We're going to send it back to you. Thanks. Well, Svensson just got a nice break after the terrible one in the second. What do you think of uh, what Tom Doherty just said about thinking that Smallwood could climb the, will climb the ladder? Uh, I, I think Jesper's got something to say about that. Plastic ball to make a comeback if people see this. <laughs> that's just raw power. And that's why we enjoy watching Jesper Svensson bowl as much as we do, uh, because of the raw power that comes out of that two-handed lefty style of his. I, you know, I, I think the plastic ball gives him a little hold um, in something that he needs to pull big scores on. But again, the unsinkable Tom Smallwood, not bothered by any of that. Well, you got to, you know, you, you, get, you take advantage of the open, and then you get on top of your opponent and smother him, and that's what Smallwood continues to do with the string of strikes. Big difference in these first four frames was a bad break for Svensson on the 7-10. Look out. Boy, that bounced awkwardly. Who kept that out? Well, he double dribbled it, and then he got five. And now he's left himself with a pretty tough spare on a really tough 
oil pattern as we take a look at the double dribble. Watch this. I don't even know there's a nickname for this lead. <laughs> yeah, it, the one, two, five, eight, nine. How would you attack this? Yeah, throw a strike ball. A little heavy in the pocket. <laughs> yeah. There's your lesson for the day. Thank you, Tom and Randy. He made that look pretty easy. Yeah, he did. But right now, Svensson can... Probably should have my thumb hole anymore, should I? Oh, it came out of his hand hit, and hit and landed on the thumb hole. Svensson now with a strike here in the fifth and sixth can take the lead. We mentioned that we have nine PBA Tour champions in our nine-player step ladder. Yes, we're with six titles and a major. Oh, wow. A reluctant 10-pin. It looked almost as if a pin dropped out of the ceiling to take it out. Take a look at the 10-pin, and that pin gets airborne and almost goes up and over it. Now to take the lead for the first time in this match. I don't think I've ever seen a 1.0 before in those arsenals. Now, that slid in front of the seven probably wasn't all that close. I mentioned the Jespers, and he's won in Shawnee before. He won the Fire Lake PBA Tournament of Champions in 2016 for his major. Well, what's interesting is that he actually led this tournament in Detroit last year to only to lose to EJ Tackett. This year he didn't average 190. Uh-oh. Uh yeah, he knew it right away. Never close. And so two opens for Jesper on that left lane. One was just a terrible break on a 7-10. That was just not his best shot. So he trails by 20 over Tom Smallwood. Tom Dorby picked Smallwood as the guy to run the ladder today to make it to tomorrow's finals. Will Jesper Svensson be able to recover after that mistake? Tonight, Manny Pacquiao defends his WBO welterweight title against Australian Jeff Horn, the top contender in the world in our Battle of Brisbane. Coverage down under starts at 9 p.m. Eastern on ESPN and ESPN Deportes. It can also be seen streaming live on the ESPN app. Yes, free boxing, and both are boxers. Pretty did, nice. Did, did you say free? Yeah, man, right here on I'm the mothership. In. Yeah, this ought to be uh, awesome. Pac-Man trying to go for that 60th championship. Now, 30 is another number here we want to mention because our Columbia 300 fun fact, 30th time the PBA Tour has contested a tournament in the state of Oklahoma. Tom Hennessy was your first winner. 1962, the Coca-Cola PBA Open at Lincoln Lanes in OKC. And by the way, this city's buzzing after the news that broke last night with Paul George on his way to OKC. Team up with Russell Westbrook. That ought to be fun to watch. Everybody chasing that one group. I know. <laughs> Good luck. It's not going to be easy. Now, Tom Smallwood, uh, he's being chased by Jesper Svensson right now. Get lucky? He or didn't. Unlucky. Ah. <laughs> it's always nice when they do our jobs That's for them. Bad. That wasn't bad, bad. No. All right, he said it wasn't bad, bad. Was he? Is he right? No need for me to say anything. He just told you. <laughs> Yeah, no, this isn't that bad. I mean, it's a little left, and then he says, all right, get lucky, and it, it I mean, at worst, maybe a four pin, but instead he pays the price 4-9. So if he can slide the four over. Like that. Masterful. And this is our Barbasol close shave of the day. Well, he's just suffocating Jesper Svensson right now and taking uh, advantage of the openings given to him, and he just won't let up. But that's typical Tom Smallwood. Like a bulldog on a pork chop. Oh, there you go. Yes. That's absolutely beautiful. The nine pin a little bit late to the party, but down it goes, too. That is Brady, Tom's son, six years old, and this is his birthday today, so his gift is to watch his father in person 
on an ESPN telecast. Well, no trouble for Spencer on this lane at all, the right lane. It's the left lane where he had a bad break on the 7-10 and then missed the 7 pin. <laughs> Asking for a re-rack here. Has not missed the pocket and has two opens. Missed the spare and then the pocket 7-10 in the second. Otherwise, he could have a front seven easy. You can head to PBA.com and check out the latest PBA Bowling Challenge mobile game for iPhone, iPad, and Android devices. More than 18 million have downloaded the popular game, which now features the new lanes of Route 66 and Lane 51. Click on the PBA Bowling Challenge mobile game link at PBA.com and get started today. on that lane the only way you can take that there's the ice man hashtag ice man and Svensson kind of fussing with one of his fingers there but seems to be okay and you know what plastic ball bad breaks and all he's within eight pins yeah I mean this could be a slaughter right now if it were two two shots that didn't strike Uh, crossed over a little bit and uh, conversely the right lane's been a little bit of a struggle for Smallwood in this second game of the day for him well that was the, the last two shots on that lane have been questionable for Tom and that is certainly left a target but again he's, he doesn't split he's left with just the 610. He missed that so far, he made it. He was able to throw the six pin into the sidewall to catch the 10. Watch this. There you go. Crazy. But Sensen's off a double. And you see that six frame right there, that nine miss so many times. It is so hard to win when you miss a single pin spare in a match at this level. And we've seen it come back to to haunt the player more times than not. I just tracked beautifully into the pocket for Smallwood. Well, Smallwood has to finish the match now on the right lane, and he's going to have a lot going on in, in his head when he steps up in the 10th frame, but this is a beautiful shot. But first things first. Svensson, who could max out as his maximum score could be a 235. And Smallwood's 233. Yeah. The pins react differently when he hits them flush. Well, yeah, it's because of the vortex that's created as the ball goes by. It actually sucks the pins <laughs> off the deck. And he's into the lead. And the funny thing is that Tom Smallwood is clean. He had that bizarre fifth frame where he left behind uh, a 1, 2, 5, 8, 9, but covered it. But you can see that Svensson can shut him out despite having uh, two opens. But both these players are finishing on their less favored lanes. Oh, no, no. Oh. Mm. That's most likely Swedish. Yes, it is. And if there's a Swedish FCC, we might have to apologize. Well, he's labeled every shot. And if he converts the seven pin and strikes, he'll force Tom Smallwood to strike first ball in the tenth. Now he's missed one of these already on this lane, the seven pin. <laughs> Well, he's going to need all 10 here and then a little luck. Which he hasn't had a lot of in this match. Zero. He's about as lucky as a bald, a bald guy winning a comb. 
Why would a bald guy be trying to win a comb? Would I be my question? Oh, it, he just like just a lottery a, kind of thing. He won a prize and it just happened to be a comb. <laughs> a and, lottery and scratch. And he looks game. and goes, "Wow, that was lucky." <laughs> well, that's kind of Jesper's game. <laughs> As we have a moment here, I wonder what the man who picked this pattern, Marshall Kent, who's here, is thinking. Oh, look at that. There he is. Uh, thinking about this is all his fault. <laughs> he picked this pattern. Yeah, he's smiling because he's not bowling today. He's the number one seed. He gets the day off along with Jason Belmonte, Rhino Page, and Chris Barnes. You'll see all of them tomorrow. And you know what? We're going to get inside the mind of Marshall Kent here after this match. Big shot. Well, Smallwood still needs a strike. Nine spare strike and we have a, a tie. And a one ball roll off. That 213 game was pretty strong. Thanks to Mike Edwards who keeps us honest with the scorekeeping. Keep it off the thumb hole and try to strike on a lane that he's been high the last two shots. Through the nose. That's it. Jesper wins. Unbelievable. He still just keeps hooking every time you throw it. He just could not master the right lane. Svensson had troubles on the left lane, and yet Jesper hung in there and had enough with a plastic ball to advance. Yeah, I misspoke. Spare okay. strikes a tie. There we go. Or you were right all along. Oh, wow. As it turns out, there's a stunner. Third time he had a 3-6-10 today. And all of a sudden, sitting on the bench, Jesper Svensson, who does win the match, 213 to 201 over Tom Smallwood. So a throwback look for Jesper Svensson defeats Tom Smallwood, who could not stay alive by converting that. Coming up next, EJ Tackett. The Grand Casino Hotel and Resort PBA Oklahoma Open is brought to you by HotelPlanner.com. The best place to book hotel rooms. Best rooms, best rate, guaranteed. By Radical Bowling Technologies. Wow, that's radical. By Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. And by Hammer Bowling. Nothing hits like a hammer. All right, now we continue tomorrow with the finals of the Grand Casino Hotel and Resort PBA Oklahoma Open. The winner of today's festivities will take on Chris Barnes. Then Rhino Page awaits the winner of that match. Then number two seed is Jason Belmonte. And the number one seed is Marshall Kent, who got to pick the oil pattern today. He picked a bear of a pattern, literally. He is standing by with Kimberly right now. What, um, they just talked about how you just uh, picked the bear pattern, but why did you decide to go with that since you're the number one seed? You know, I want it to be a contest of who can make the best shots, and if someone's going to beat me on Sunday, they better make better shots than I do. So that's kind of my mind mindset for tomorrow, and I'm going to stick with it. You, are you going to stick with the bear pattern? I think I'm going to stick with it, yes. All right, why did you decide to do that? Uh, like I said, I, I don't want to be a carry contest, who can strike the most. I want to be the guy that makes the best shots. That's, I, I've always believed that whoever makes the best shots should win. So uh, hopefully that's the result on Sunday. Now, let's talk a little bit about tomorrow because uh, your TV record right now is 0-6. and six. I know it's something that you absolutely want to change for the positive. But you know what? You're coming off a win last month, and you're sitting in the number one scene. Mm -hmm. How's the mindset coming into tomorrow? You know, yeah, it's... 0-6 oh, is what it is. I feel like I haven't rolled bad on TV. It's just my opponents pulled really good. I haven't had that guy to shoot 170 at me. So, you know what, I'm just going to go out there and have fun and just see what happens. And hopefully that 0-6 oh, changes. Have you learned anything watching uh, these matches today that you're going to take into tomorrow? I've learned a little bit, yeah. Uh, just kind of see how the lanes play, different lane to lane. Um, but there's completely different bowlers tomorrow, and they're probably going to play completely different, so I'm going to keep an open mind and see what happens. All right, thank you so much for your time. Thanks. Guys. All right, Kimberly and Marshall, thank you very, very much, and there they are. The rest of the story, Jason Belmonte, Chris Barnes, Rhino Page. Better believe they've watched every shot intently, and now they're going to watch E.J. Tackett and Jesper Spencer coming up.
Grand Casino Hotel and Resort PBA Oklahoma Open is two matches in on two days of stepladder semifinals and finals. And also today at 5 o'clock Eastern on ESPN, the United States men's national team. This is their last friendly before the Gold Cup. They'll take on an unfriendly opponent for them, Ghana, World Cup nemesis. You can also stream the match live on the ESPN app. You might even be watching us on that ESPN app right now. So let's update you on what you might have missed if you're just sitting down. Our opening match, Tom Doherty and Tom Smallwood. And it was Tom Smallwood moving on with a late rush over Tom Doherty, 232 to 211. And then Jesper Svensson didn't have his best, but he had enough to defeat Smallwood, 213 to 201. And now, through the young stars of the game, two power players going to go at it, Jesper Svensson and the man standing by with Kimberly is E.J. Tackett. That's right, I'm with the reigning player of the year. Now, E.J., you won on this pattern in Michigan last year, and you went up against Jesper to win that title. How confident are you again today that you can do the same thing? You know, it's going to be a tough match. You know, Jesper's a, a great bowler, obviously, and uh, he pulled a good game last game. He missed a spare, but I'm just going to have to go out and make good shots, and hopefully uh, my score at the end of the game is good enough to win. All right, thank you so much for your time, and good luck. Thanks, E.J. Thank you, Kimberly. Tackett averaged a little over 215 on this bear pattern, and Svensson won a match already today, qualified on the bear pattern now. Remember, they bowled on many different patterns, but his average was under 190, 182, Jesper. But he switched to this plastic bowling ball that you're seeing right here and got him through at least one match. Well, you couldn't anticipate that. Well, not the start you're looking for, but the good news is it's first frame. It's not on a double or a spare. So he'll try to get three, maybe four. And Jesper could still possibly make this Greek church. He'll take the three. But remember, he survived the 7-10 split and a single pin miss yep. in the last match to move on. We mentioned, by the way, that we don't have anybody seeking their first title. In this field of nine, 59 PBA Tour titles and 15 major championships. We have triple crown winners in this top nine. And here we have the player of the year from 2016 and... Oh boy, that's the same thing that just happened to Tom Smallwood, that snap hook into the face. He's playing much deeper than Smallwood was. But it's the same kind of recipe. You can't miss left of target and expect the ball to hold line. And I just left himself with a 3 6, 9 10. What I was about to say is that he is perhaps the leading contender for 2017 Player of the Year, given the year he's had already. Having won in Shawnee in February at the Fire Lake PBA Tournament of Champions, he just won the main event PBA Tour in Orlando. And also, he won in Japan in January and finished 2016 by getting that PBA World Championship for his first career major. And a critical tournament for him because he had the 2015 as the top seed, didn't win. But he fixed that in 2016. Talking with EJ, he said he likes the spare pattern. And I think it's because he can move in and create angle through the front where a lot of other players cannot. Well, you mentioned it. He Patterns don't seem to matter to him. But the versatility and the power to overcome whatever the challenges are for each of the patterns. Well, standing by with Tom Smallwood and Kimberly Pressler, we'd like to announce the television debut of Brady Smallwood. Uh, Kimberly? That's right. Brady is also joining us, and it's his birthday. But, Tom, let's talk about your match real quick. You needed a strike in the 10th. What happened? Um, it was my tough lane all day. Um, made a minor adjustment. Thought I threw it pretty good, and it just didn't work. Uh, throwing such a weak bowling ball, I was scared to move too much, and, uh, you know, it just didn't work out. Uh, you know, it could have still made the spare and struck, but honestly, I don't know how I would have struck in that lane. I had to make a big move and probably get lucky guess. So it's a uh, bold pretty solid today. Just, you know, one frame too short. One frame too short, but thank you so much for your time, and happy birthday, Brady. Thank you. Thank you very much, Tom and Brady. And yes, Bruce Benson almost had, for a flash, a 5-7 pen. Yeah, he almost left the sour apple. And I bet, I bet you can't say that. I bet Jesper can't say that. You know, that's the second or third time I've left that. 
I, he's never, ever left uh, the five seven ten, and now he's changing balls going to your thing. This is what we know him Interesting. as. Yeah, this is his favorite toy in the toy chest, and something distracted him off camera. Oh. I don't know what it was. So he restarts the routine. And you see the left lane has been a pest. As the right lane was for Tom Smallwood in the second match. Oh. Take a look at this ball. It gets about halfway down the lane and gets airborne. Follow the ball real close now. Right there. And it's just the panel. The panel's raised just a little bit on that left lane. And what that does, it actually takes the momentum and a little bit of the revolutions off of the ball. Well, you could tell, you, you said it earlier, if you don't go far enough right, it's going to be a disaster. <laughs> And we're now we're seeing the nasty, mean bear pattern that we, we now have seen in the first match. Well, you know, keep in mind, Dave, that when your brain doesn't feel that you can throw the ball an inch to the right, you're going to miss left every shot. That's why I hated bowling on this flat pattern. I always felt like I was bowling in a phone booth. <laughs> and so Tackett went for it, lofted over a lot of that oil and misses so right now two of the best players in the world are struggling Jesus, Pete. Uh, and you see what uh, Tackett has in his arsenal chronic paranoia the Forza SS Sigma Sting and Tag Cannon and right now he's going with Forza Away. He doesn't even know what he left. Hey, what are you doing? It's another three, six, nine, ten, and he throws it straight at this spare. I hope you get it right of the head, Ben. No. He, he was able to cover it in the first frame, but it's an interesting technique. And we're seeing a lot more players on the tour throw it straight at this spare. And you heard him say it, and you've already talked about it, Randy. It would be nice if I could get it right of the head, Ben. Amazing throwing it that straight and that hard. 30 worse. And still catching every the back nine pin. I think my left ear is itching every time I throw the ball. <laughs> Brett Spangler, his ball representative, and he's sharing a laugh. Jesper Svensson has the only strike of the match. My goodness, a ringer and then a tap, and still couldn't get it to go. Well, but the good news is that he's hit the pocket three shots in a row. He's made the ball change, and now all he has to do is execute, and he knows he can get the ball to the pocket. EJ, well, he, he hasn't hit the pocket yet. This has been an, a real adventure for Svensson. He's had opens, missed single pins. Two times he's left the 7-10 today. He's still standing. <laughs> All right, so we've seen Jesper make a change. Would you advise EJ Tackett needs to make an equipment change? No, because he hasn't made a good enough shot to 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 base any judgment off of. Okay. He hasn't he hasn't got one to the to the right spot yet. Spencer out of Gothenburg, Sweden. <laughs> There, oh, got a break. A little Tomahawk 7 there. But Jesper, not a very emotional guy on the lanes. Looks still pretty unhappy, even though he caught this break. Another little bump down the lane there, too, you could see. That's a nice break here, the 4 leaning into the 7. Tackett, a former Rookie of the Year. 2012-13 season. That, that's an EJ Tackett strike. Yeah. Question is, how much farther right down lane can he get it and still get it back to the pocket?
Tackett's been coming on the last few years. It was top 10 in earnings and average the last two seasons. In addition to being the 2016 player of the year. And he's 24 years old. He'll be 25 next month. Ooh. Almost another 4 9. Yeah, Lane hooks, EJ. You know it hooks. Just not trusting it on this lane, or he has to move deeper. And by deeper, you mean farther left with his feet, and he could possibly leave his target alone, thus increasing angle, angle through the front part of the lane. Smothers the four pin. You get a sense this match is going to be close right down to the end. Yes, Chris Spence and EJ Tackett right now have gone fishing for strikes, and there aren't a lot of nibbles on this difficult bear pattern. The PBA Oklahoma Open will return from Shawnee. But tomorrow night, we'll be back at Bush Stadium for the series finale between Bryce Harper, the National League East leading Nationals, and the St. Louis Cardinals. Our coverage begins at 7 Eastern on ESPN with baseball tonight and also streaming live on the ESPN app. Scherzer and Martinez, it's a nice little matchup tomorrow night on Sunday Night Baseball. Well, let's get back to business here. Thomas Larson, the fifth seed. Today's top seed in this two-day, nine-player stepladder final. The number seven seed, Jesper Svensson. The number six seed, E.J. Tackett. Three majors between them, 14 tour titles. Combined age, 46 years old. And Svensson, pure power. New leader. I mean, nothing seems to rattle... Jesper Svensson, I, I, I'm almost positive that his pillow is cool on both sides. <laughs> he's just unflappable. And right now he's got the lead. And I think he's got a very good look to the pocket. 2015 Rookie of the Year. Well, he makes the switch from plastic to the urethane ball, and that has paid off. That's Jesper Svensson. That's the guy we know right there. You know, and I think it, it, it Jesper really gets it going and, and finishes big here, wins and goes on and bowls a big game. I know. I moved one on the left lane because I and, and bowl, he moved. Yeah, he said he moved one on the left lane. But if he goes on to bowl a big game against um, Larson, I might think about you might think about uh, Marshall Kent changing this pattern. Today. Even though he has already said God, suck. Suck. that he is not going to. I don't know to. why you can't just get it get it there. Just get it there. All right, so why can't he, in your opinion? <sighs> well, let, let's wait and see if he tries to get one there, what happens okay. if it keeps going. That's what that You think that, that's what he's fighting? Yeah. That I, it's just going to take off and never come back? Absolutely. I think in the back of his mind, he knows that there's a, a point where it's not going to come back from him. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, I love when the backup ball gets three right off of it. That's good. Well, right All now, right. E E.J. Tackett is fighting the lanes. He's fighting Esper Spenson and quite possibly fighting himself. Uh, I, oh, it's that's a enough. great point. All of those points. <laughs> that is a ball change. You see the maximum scores. And he mixes him up and puts him down. And the funny thing is about this is Jesper Svensson on this pattern struggled more than any of the nine semifinalists we had. Yeah, he the three pin. 189.12 for Jesper. There, take a look. That's just the guys who were on today's show. You see our top seed Marshall Kent just a shade under 210. But yet here's Jesper in position to move on to face Thomas Larson, who did very well on this pattern at 224 and is considered an excellent shot maker. Oops. Ah! <laughs> Hang on. Just got oh. interesting. Well, it's almost time for college football on ESPN. That means you could have said 
Not so fast, my friend, yeah. because this match is not over. Yeah, where's Lee Corso when you need him? Right through the face, 4 six, ten, And all of a sudden, it's a, this, this match is taking on a whole new complexion. Look at that jump. You saw plus 28 shrink to plus 16. The one thing Svensson's got going for him as he checks the scoreboard off to his left is Tackett running out of frames to catch up, but it's possible. Max score for Jesper, 202. Max score, EJ Tackett, 196. And right now, Jesper looking to set up his 10th frame for the foundation strike here. <laughs> Quiet seven. That messenger's not going to make it over. Well, EJ Tackett now has a chance to step up and strike out in the ninth and 10th frame and steal this one away from Jesper Svensson. When it looked like it was going to be a slaughter, all of a sudden we've got a ball game. Well, EJ's had breaks in, in this town before. Remember how he won the Tournament of Champions. Did not have his best stuff. Tough pattern. Yeah. Same lanes. Yeah. Different location. And he somehow managed to win the championship. You can outfit yourself like the pros with official PBA jerseys available exclusively at PBA.com. The jerseys are made from high-performance fabric, and be, you can customize them, too, for everybody or your whole team. Click on the menu tab of PBA.com homepage, select Shop PBA link, and get started. Yeah, there he goes. He goes wide, and exactly what you talked about There's happened. The tight lane. That's why he didn't want to get it There's to the right. The tight lane. An ugly game, well, an ugly match. He gets it to where he wants. He gets it to where he wants it down lane, and then that ball just stopped. And he said that's the tight lane. Smallwood said that was the tougher of the two lanes for him. Going after it as hard as he can. He's going to maybe bang it off the wall and get a break that time. And all of a sudden, he's back to minus 28. Well, Svensson struggled on the left. Wow, I, I really like that one. Right-handers have struggled on the right <sighs> lane. Okay. We have another right-hander and Thomas Larsen out of Denmark coming up. How about this? We're looking potentially at Sweden versus Denmark. Part of the international flair of the PBA that's really exploded the last few years. A ring of ten. Wow. It's 16 countries represented in this event. Almost 30% of our field, 26 out of our 91 from outside the United States. Boy, it's just not there today for Tackett. Cool, man. Cool up. Yes, for Svensson. Thomas Larson, our next match. <coughs> There'll be better days ahead for EJ without question. <coughs> he already has three tour titles this year, but Jesper Svensson is moving on to our final match of the day against the fifth seed, Thomas Larson, a 27-year-old two-time champion from Denmark who'll be looking for his first win in the United States. And Svensson finishing in style on that right-handed lane. Coming up. <laughs> Our final of the semi-final matches. Yes for Spencer, Thomas Larson. The U.S. men's national team will play their final warm-up before the Gold Cup. Today at 5 Eastern on ESPN versus Ghana, their World Cup nemesis. You can also stream the match live using the ESPN app. With Kimberly Fressler. And Randy Peterson, I'm Dave Lamont, our statistician Mike Edwards, and our ESPN crew. And it's time for our GEICO Championship recap. Well, match number one was Tom Doherty and Tom Smallwood. But Tom Smallwood throwing some big wood as he goes on to win 232 to 211. Smallwood's next opponent, the Iceman. Yes, for Svensson, two three-baggers. Now, Smallwood has a chance in the 10th but can't get it done, goes through the nose, misses the spare, and Smallwood wins sitting on the bench. And match number three was a tough one. 
back and forth. Svensson does catch a three-bagger in the middle. And then that strike in the 10th frame, he shuts out EJ Tack at 179-150. Interesting comments from Jesper Svensson about the left lane. He was telling Tim Mack, his ball rep, that when I throw it in the left lane, I don't even want to look at it. He's going to have to look at Thomas Larson. The winner of this match goes on to tomorrow's final. Tonight be a rest night for our four bowlers who aren't bowling, like Jason Balboni, Chris Barnes, Rhino Page, and top seed Marshall Kent, but they'll be back tomorrow. And they'll take on the winner of this match, either Jesper Svensson or Thomas Larson. Maybe they'll watch this fight because it's not going to cost them anything. Manny Pacquiao defends his WBO welterweight title against Australian Jeff Horn, the top contender in the world. It's the Battle of Brisbane. Coverage down under starts at 9 Eastern on ESPN and ESPN Deportes. And also can be seen streaming live on the ESPN app. Well, Thomas Larson versus Jesper Svensson. Here's Thomas with Kimberly Pressler. Thank you, Dave. So, Thomas, uh, yesterday when we spoke in the interview, you said if you could have picked a pattern, it would have been the bear. But everyone's been having a little bit of a rough day on this pattern. You just took your practice shots. Would you still pick the bear? Well, probably, yeah. Uh, look wasn't the greatest, but just have to make 10 good shots, and hopefully that's enough to beat Jesper. All right. Well, thank you so much for your time, and good luck to you. And that leads me to this question for you, Randy. Bowled on television many, many times and very successfully in your career. Thomas just watched a very difficult match. Yeah. Both guys struggled. Does that affect you at all as you're watching and you know you're bowling the next match? Well, he was only watching one guy, and that, and that was um, E.J. Tackett and his ball reaction. And he's fully aware of what the lanes are not giving him. You know, this is the toughest pattern in the PBA library. And it's basically just a, a knockoff of a U.S. Open pattern. But he knows he can't get right or left of target and expect to get it to the pocket. That's it with urethane on that left lane. He started with plastic ball. And actually, when he had, he threw a reactive ball. When he knew the match was over, he took a shot in practice and, and actually, actually threw a reactive just to see what that looked like. But he's gone back to that urethane. Here is our first look today at Thomas Larson, a two-time champion on the tour in 2013 in Abu Dhabi and in Kuwait City in 2014. So he has not won inside the 50 states yet. Ooh, there it is again. Every time on that right lane to right-handers. Well, I watched, I watched him warm up, and it didn't look good. He had a, a big-time struggle just getting his ball to the pocket. But this is the same kind of stuff we saw with EJ Tack. A little bit left to target, it goes through the nose. A little bit right of target, it's going to hang. All right. And it's hard to pry it off when you have that kind of reaction. Which will lead me to another question here after this shot. Larson, we've seen a lot of these two six hands. He converts that one. All right. Marshall Kent's a pretty powerful player. Yeah. Could he overcome that tomorrow? He'd have the same look. Exactly, because he's going to be the number one seed. He's going to be sitting where Larson is sitting, who's today's sort of number one seed. He would he would have played the lanes exactly like EJ, and very similar in terms of power. EJ a little bit more power than Marshall, but very similar. They can play the lanes uh, very similar to one another. Marshall's reaction would have been the same. Hang, hang to the right, hook left. On that left lane, that time it slipped a little bit, and fortunately for him, the 10 pin got knocked down. You can see his reaction simply in one word, wow. You know, I think Tom Doherty had a good strategy if he gets by Tom Small in the first match because he was able to go nice and straight with urethane. He made a couple of bad shots that cost him, but, you know, he probably could have been 202 team 220 every game if he could have executed. Instead, Smallwood got him, and that was the end of it. He's made two very difficult spares to begin the match. And that's a win today. Take a look at these two. Larson the older by five years. This is Thomas's fourth appearance for television finals. Jesper making number 10, or I should say three and 10. And Thomas yet to win on television in America. Svensson, quite good when the lights are on and eight titles combined. Oh, 
Foy. And this time the 247 was broken up with a seven pin kicked aside. Well, much better than the Greek church. Honestly, I think 2 0 or 2 team wins it. If you can get there. Yeah, I mean, for, for Jesper, I'm not sure that Thomas can get to 2 team. This is going to be make the spares this match, I really believe, because if you leave a couple of opens on the table, <coughs> that could cost you. Because I, you're right, we saw a lot of striking early, Smallwood and Doherty, when the lanes were fresh, but they've been eaten up a little bit now, and we can see that it's going to be much tougher to string strikes. Beautiful strike by Svensson standing by with Kimberly Pressler is the man who Svensson just defeated, E.J. Tackett. Kimberly? Thank you, Dave. So, E.J., you know, I saw you getting frustrated out there just a little bit. You know, you even said that you liked a few shots. They just weren't working out the way you wanted to. At the end there, were you struggling more with the pattern or with yourself? Um, definitely the beginning of the game, I was. it was all me. Um, there at the end, I made the ball change in the middle of the game. And uh, I got up in the ninth, and I threw a really, really good shot. I, I liked it off my hand. I thought it was dead flush when I threw it to a 10. So I guess at the end there, I was, it was the lane. But, you know, it, it, it wasn't easy out there. No, it was not. Thank you so much for your time. EJ, thank you. And Thomas Larson, that's not a replay of earlier shots from right-handers. That was live action with Thomas. And uh, he's going to be up for a, yet another spare attempt here. As the mind games, this pattern brings out and continue. Well, the difficult pattern got even tougher for the right-handers based on how Tom Doherty played them early on, where Smallwood played them, then E.J. Tackett got in and really beat up the middle part of the lane as we take a look at Thomas Larson's arsenal using a phobia. It's something that I have with this oil pattern. <laughs> You're not going to be the only a one. Real, the today. real, real phobia <laughs> with bear. See ya. All right. So what do you do? Well, and that's why I keep going back to Tom Doherty and the earth thing. Nice and straight. Something that doesn't read a whole lot. Something that you can go down and in and attack the one three on, his, on the most direct line possible. That's what happens when you get it to the right. You get it right of, of that little spot there, you, you whiff the head pin. It picks up speed as it hits the 3-6 in the face. Another tough spare. Well, I tell you what, Ty, you give Thomas a lot of credit. He's had a variety of spares to shoot at, and he's covered them all. So he's going to hang around this match. Yes, for Svensson with the eight-pin advantage and coming off of a strike. Two of them, in fact, in this match so far. Now, the winner of this match moves on to tomorrow's show, 1 o'clock Eastern, and will face Chris Barnes, the number four seed. My goodness. And again, for Jesper, that little fist pump's about as crazy as he gets. Although I do remember in the team championships <coughs> back in, in Maine earlier this year, he struck out to uh, win a point and really let loose. And he's asked for a re-rack. Chris Barnes, Rhino Page, Jason Belmonte, Marshall Kent on the show tomorrow. And yes, for Svensson leaves behind the six pin. That's more than okay. Nine spare right now is is just fine. Thomas Larson hasn't proven he can hit the <coughs> pocket yet.
So there you see our four. All smiles now. Yeah. <laughs> but right now they're they've got Marshall Kent tied up in a room threatening him that if he doesn't change this pattern, it's curtains for him. A little maintenance being done down lane. That's what the holdup is here. Now Jesper's ready. Things are to his satisfaction. Again, he averaged only 189 on this pattern among the four that we're qualified with. Well, he's doing a little bit better today. Uh, it, he's right at uh, he's right at about 195. So the search for strikes continues for Larson. Strikes. How about pocket? Different ball here. Same result. I mean, two boards right of that, he missed the head pin. That's how hard they got. That's why, I, I, again, I, I like something that you can go straighter with that doesn't read. Something that doesn't read the oil pattern, like a urethane bowling ball, he can move 15 boards, 20 boards to the right and pipe it straight up second arrow. I don't know if there's any other alternative, honestly. That's what I, 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 man, I give him so much credit to keep his poise like that. And Spencer's starting to heat up, and Larson is not letting go. Well, he, he was a little fortunate on that conversion. But you look at his first five frames, David, seven spare, eight spare, eight spare, six spare, six spare. He hasn't got nine on the first ball yet, let alone a strike. And this kid's a... a one of the best bowlers in Europe. And he, he actually dominated this event for the first three rounds. Yeah, until Marshall Kent passed him. And everybody is going to break through the face as well and leave a couple behind. But, I mean, Larson said is having a wonderful career. You mentioned overseas, European team champion, European bowling tour rankings winner in the past, silver medalist in European championship masters a few years ago. We haven't seen him a lot over here, but everybody in Europe knows who he is. He was in the uh, lookout. How's yeah. that? Yep. It's just it's got to be difficult to have to constantly shoot spares and just a little crack in your foundation there. I was about to say that last year we saw him in the Chameleon Championship in Reno. He finished third there. Well, he he's so mentally worn out from trying to figure out a way to get his ball to the pocket that he just gets up and whiffs the easiest spare he's had to shoot at. Yep, it looked like it was a little firm and a little left of target. He's left himself with a tough one. <laughs> Bucket without the six pin. Well, if you're a, a golf fan who's angry at the high scores at the U.S. Open in Wisconsin, but you also like bowling. You're getting low scores here in a tough condition for a tournament timing. You know, you know what's funny about that is that, that viewers love to watch golfers struggle. Mm -hmm. No question. But it seems like they hate to watch our players struggle. Beautifully converted there for Svensson. Yeah, that's a great conversion. I, I get this one all the time, too. Well, you're a pro. Why can't you adjust? <coughs> <laughs> well, there's only so many adjustments you can make before now, you, now you, before you have to split hairs. Right now, this man has the best look out of anyone, and it's not all that great. Tough, tough pattern. Let me throw another question at you. We do have a lefty tomorrow, Rhino Page. Now, different than Jesper because he's one-handed. Is, is this encouraging for Rhino to watch this? <laughs> Well, Rhino uses reactive, uh, where Jesper's using urethane. All that does is drag oil down the lane. It could possibly create a little bit of hold down lane for Rhino Page, or it creates a hang spot. Um, I'm not sure any of the four players that are going to be on tomorrow's telecast that are watching now are excited.
Nope. You know, just for a moment, I thought that was going to work, but it, it's, it is the same thing over and over again right now for the right-handers. Yeah. And remember, Marshall Kent can change his mind. Now, earlier on the telecast, he told Kimberly, no, I think I'm going to stick with this. I want shot makers. I want to, I want to win by making shots. I wonder... And unfortunately, he won't declare while we're still on the air. So I'm sure if you check social media, it'll be out there. If he's going to change his mind after seeing the last two games and how right-handers have just been lost in the woods. And somebody else who's been doing a lot of thinking about this is standing by with Kimberly, and that's uh, future Hall of Famer Chris Barnes. Kimberly? Thanks, guys. Chris, I've been watching you, and you have been watching this match. What have you learned that you can take into tomorrow? <laughs> well, they don't look like very much fun out there right now. They're, uh, this pair has turned difficult again. Uh, you know, Jesper has a pretty good look on the left. If uh, Marshall picks the same pattern, uh, the lefties may be a lot to deal with. Marshall has said, and he could change his mind, but he has said that he's going to stick with the bear pattern. Yeah, well, and also uh, my same strategy. Uh, it doesn't look like a whole lot of fun playing fifth arrow out there right now, that's for sure. All right, thank you so much for your time, and good luck tomorrow. Thank you. All right, thank you. Chris will be playing the winner of this match. At the moment, it's Jesper Svensson, rather comfortably, in the opening match. Yeah, that's going to almost do it. Now, of course, the lanes will be different than they are right now. They'll be fresher for Chris and for, most likely, Jesper Svensson. And a lot of it will be determined by how the players warm up in practice, what part of the lane they play. And by the way, Chris on Bear, 222 of the four finalists of the, on tomorrow's show, he had the best <laughs> on this pattern as a split bear for Svensson. Uh, Kent was just under 210. Jason <laughs> Belmonte, 199. Rhino Page, just about 212. Well, Barnes was really good on all the patterns. As we see Jesper go through the nose, leaving the 410. Going for it. Wow, I thought he made it. Still a 32 pin lead going into the ninth frame. Larson, max score 180. Jesper, if he just spare strike the rest of the game, will be in the 190s. Oof, yeah. Solid looking pocket wow. hit that time for Svensson. Highest rev rate on tour, that man right there, and, and that was a really fast ring in seven. <laughs> Moving a step closer, Svensson, to making the final five for tomorrow. One o'clock on ESPN Eastern. Those four, plus the winner of this match, appears to be that guy right there, Jesper Svensson, getting a little counsel. All right, you've seen, we're going to assume, making the assumption that Kent sticks with the pattern. We're going to see Bear tomorrow. Who do you like? I think a left-hander wins. So we've got two of those. Uh, barring something miraculous. I mean, you really... Uh, he breaks up the split nicely, his first really good break of the day. <laughs> and his first nine count. And the only way he got it was by backdooring the four and the two. So crazy. I never, I never would have thought I'd see, I, I'd see a professional go a whole game without throwing a strike. And we're getting real close to that. Well, let me throw this at you, too. We're going to see our first two-handed right-hander on this pattern tomorrow with uh -huh. Jason Belmonte, who yep. obviously... His resume speaks for itself. How does this affect him? Because he'll be a couple matches in. I mean, if they break down the, the same way, I don't see him having that much of an advantage. I mean, yeah, he, he does some things that no, no, nobody else does. But see, that's the shot. I, that's the shot I thought he should have been playing, the down and in. He moved about 15 right and went straighter. So he broke up the no-hitter. He broke up the no-hitter. 
I mean, he, he, getting back to Belmonte, yeah, so he moves in deeper, he starts lofting it, revving it. I, th I think his reaction's still the same. If he gets it too far right, it hangs. If he gets it up the lane just a little bit, it goes through the nose. He would have had a chance playing that line. And I'm honestly, I'm really surprised he waited that long because through five frames, he wasn't close to the pocket. He probably should have changed uh, after his second six spare in the fifth. So Jesper Svensson has advanced. He has made it through this difficult bear pattern today in the semifinals, and he will join the others for tomorrow's match. And he'll open up against Chris Barnes. That ought to be something. The Grand Casino Hotel and Resort, BBA Oklahoma Open, is brought to you by Grand Casino Hotel and Resort, the Oklahoma City area's premier casino resort experience. By Brunswick. Find your next ball at bowlwithbrunswick.com. By the United States Bowling Congress, creating competitive opportunities at all levels as we build a future for the sport. Visit bowl.com for more. And by Motive Bowling. Get motivated. So the final score, yes, for Svensson with a 192. He averaged less than 200 and moves on to tomorrow's finals here at the Grand Casino Hotel and Resort after defeating Thomas Larson 192 to 160. He's standing by with Kimberly. Thanks, Randy and Dave. So, Jesper, you know what? This pattern lived up to its name. It was, it was a bear. It was brutal. You had some opens. You had some 7-10 splits. But you pushed through. You took out three other competitors. How would you rate your performance today? Um, I'm just very satisfied with how I just kept everything together. And, of course, I mean, you get frustrated sometimes when you, you really mess up on a different pattern or a difficult pattern. But, you, you know, I just try to keep throwing it good and stay within the process. And... Yeah, that was enough today. Now you get to do it all over again tomorrow because Marshall has said earlier that he's going to stick with this pattern. How do you wipe the slate clean and move forward for tomorrow? You know, tomorrow's a new day, so everything can happen. I'm just going to try to do the same things today, just stay with the process and throw the ball good and, yeah, see if we can do it. Any uh, thoughts on what you'll be throwing tomorrow? Oh, uh, no, not yet. I have to sleep about that. All right. Thank you so much for your Thank time you. and congratulations on moving forward to the finals. So there it is. The seventh seed, Jesper Svensson, survives the first day. Now he has to take on Chris Barnes, the winner facing Rhino Page. Then Jason Belmonte and Marshall Kent, the top seed. Will it be the bear pattern? Is Kent sticking to his word, or did what he see today change his mind? You'll find out tomorrow at 1 Eastern for the conclusion of the Grand Casino Hotel and Resort PBA Oklahoma Open. We can't wait to bring it to you. For Kimberly Pressler, Randy Peterson, Brady Smallwood, and our entire ESPN crew, I'm Dave Lamont. We thank you for watching the semifinals, the first of two step ladders, the PBA Oklahoma Open. We'll see you tomorrow at 1 Eastern from the Grand Casino Hotel Event Center and crown a well-earned title.